Well, I'm going to do some stand-up at a, a gig where there isn't only stand-up. It's quite unusual, but don't worry. We'll get through this. It's going to be fun, okay? Uh, it's a great festival. I really like the fact that there's so many people from different countries and so many things happening. Um, and uh, give yourselves a round of applause because it's beautiful weather, but you're inside. <laughs> Listen to us spill our guts on stage in front of you. Uh, I walked in... <laughs> I walked in when, uh, I can't remember his name, was it Jacques, 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 Jacques? The, the guy with the guitar, uh, Joaquin. Joaquin. Joaquin, that's you, yeah? No, okay, sorry, the light is blinding me, I can't really see, but uh, I liked how he said that, oh, there you are, man, okay, <laughs> beautiful voice, wonderful performance, uh, I like how your friend said that the song is, reminds him of of masturbation and it was the most gentle song <laughs> I've ever heard. I don't know what kind of masturbational sessions he has, but well, I would fall asleep, I think. You know? <laughs> and uh, Cynthia, Idris Elba is the shit, isn't he? Thank you. Right? Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And he's in that new film based on the um, Stephen. Stephen uh, no, what's his name? No, Stephen King. What? Because it's shit! It's a shit film! How can you fuck up a film with Idris Elba in it? It's insane! He's an amazing guy, right? Okay, not everybody thinks so, but fuck you guys. <laughs> so check him out, he's, he's amazing. He's amazing in everything he does. I'm gonna watch that film just because of Idris Elba. Okay? Uh, guys, so yeah, my name is Andre, and uh, I am Polish. That's true, I am Polish. However, I have lived abroad for a long time. I maybe don't look it, maybe I don't behave like it, but I am 30 years old, and I have lived in England for 12 years of my life, okay? Thank you, great. <laughs> Are you from England or? Yeah. yeah? Where, where from? I'm from Newcastle, but I've lived in London. Newcastle, Newcastle Brown Ale. Yeah. I used to get very drunk on that. It's a beer. That's why I've got this gut now, okay? I have a girlfriend who accepts it, okay? I'm gonna... This is gonna get to the end, at the end of my thing, I'm gonna talk about it, okay? It's very important to find somebody who accepts you, okay? <laughs> For who you are, okay? But I lived in England, and I lived in Cambridge, London, and Bristol. A lot of people think that's very upper class. However, I cleaned toilets, for instance. I did jobs like that. But one of my jobs, when I was in London, uh, was answering phone calls from people who were angry. Okay? Not a great job, but somebody had to do it. Okay? They chose me. Why? I'll tell you in a moment. I, uh, I have done a lot of drugs in my life. Okay? By a lot, I mean probably around eight. I can't remember. Different types, I mean. Uh, I can't remember, because obviously when you take drugs, you can't remember some things. But uh, when... <laughs> so I was working in this place, and English people, you probably will agree with me this, uh, about this, they want to complain, but they won't complain in your face. They don't like the confrontation, okay? Right? Yeah. So they go home, and anger brews in them like tea <laughs> that they drink, like a narcotic. And they call you up, and they go, their favorite phrase is, Hello, I would like to issue a complaint. May I talk to your manager, please? And the key thing in the story is that I was stoned at work. Because my friend was my boss, and she didn't give a shit. And that's fine with me, because I'm the kind of guy, I mean, you can see, right? <laughs> I mean, I walk, I walk in the center of Warsaw and people ask me for drugs. That's how I look like right now. Like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, right? And uh, a fatter version. But anyway, so the guy calls up and says, Can I talk to your manager, please? I would like to complain. And I said, really? Of course, sir. Of course you can complain. I'll put you on to my manager, and I, I took the phone to my asshole, to my butthole, and I farted into the phone. And I'm sorry, this is a beautiful setting, but I did that, okay? And I'm not proud of myself, but I was high, excuses, excuses, whatever, okay? I farted into the phone, I took the phone to my ear, and the guy goes, Excuse me, uh, have you lost your mind? I asked your manager, and I believe you just farted into the phone. 
And I said, no, that's my asshole. Good. I fucked up the joke, guys. Yes! This is the... I've been telling this joke for about uh, two years now. Never fucked it up. Right now, I'm too relaxed. Should I, should I say it again or should I just leave it? Because it's worth it. It's the... <laughs> this is ridiculous. I've never actually fucked up this joke before. But, so, this is the only joke I've ever came up with. Okay? So, <laughs> can I talk to your manager, please? I fart into the phone. The guy goes, are you crazy? I asked for your manager. And I said, that is my manager. He is an asshole. Yeah. Ah, right? Everybody, everybody has an asshole manager. That's why it's a good joke. But I, I did, I actually, apart from, I didn't say that, obviously, in real life. Sorry, this lady is very disgusted by what I just said. But, uh, obviously, I didn't say that at the end, but I did fart into the phone. And uh, I didn't keep the job. However, I learned some things, you know, that you shouldn't probably do this stuff. You shouldn't smoke weed and go to work. But uh, I didn't learn that you shouldn't take drugs. Because there's another story uh, that I'm going to tell you with drugs. Um, there are some Spanish people here, right? That's what I heard before. Right? Give me a clap. Spanish people can clap pretty loud, right? There's two. There's two very loud Spaniards in here. Wonderful. Because, guys, I lived in Bristol. Bristol is ripe for drugs. You can get everything in, in Bristol. Everything you can imagine when it comes to drugs. And once I was going home after work, after working at a bar, and I just wanted to have one more drink at home, right? However, I had Spanish friends. And I don't know if any of you have Spanish friends, but if they say to you, eh, come with us for one more cerveza, say fucking no, okay? Because you're probably gonna spend about five or four days drinking, binging with them, they'll feed you, they'll give you drugs and alcohol and everything, but you're gonna have like, you know, five days out of your life. So, I'm standing with them on the street, and I told you I don't learn very well. Like, I don't, des decisions I make in life are very bad. So there was a guy standing by a dumpster, by a bin, and he was smoking something. And he said, hey, you want some of this? And I said, yeah, <laughs> of course. I mean, you're smoking it, it can't be that bad. So I had it, and it turns out, guys, it was Genetically modified weed. Exactly. Weird, right? I mean, weed is already pretty nice. Why would you modify it genetically? However, people have done that, and guess what? It fucks you up straight away. I, I had two puffs, and I uh, looked at my friend, a, f a female friend, and she looks at me and goes, What the fuck was that? And I said, I don't know. And the guy goes, It's genetically modified weed. Everything started melting around me. His face got really long and he said, Strong, isn't it? And I said, Yeah. And then I started falling backwards and I was falling backwards for 10 years. Guys. <laughs> of course, that was in my head, but I, I don't wish on anyone this, like being stuck in your head for 10 years, okay? So what I'm saying is that I'm an experienced guy, okay? <laughs> I'm a 40-year-old comedian, okay, doing a show at a weird festival, that's what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> but, don't, mean, don't give me a clap for that. But uh, the nice thing about Spanish friends is that they look after you, so we went to an ER, and in England, that's emergency room. In England, an ER, this is too low, ER is a place where, imagine a party, like we're all having a party, but suddenly something exploded or something, and everybody's cut up. That's basically ER. So everybody's drunk, there's puke everywhere, and people are cut up. And I was there, I came to, and I looked around, and I instantly vomited on the floor. And I said, sorry to ruin the atmosphere. <laughs> and I left. And that was my evening with my Spanish friends, okay? Uh, I brought an instrument with me. Should I play trumpet for you guys? Would you like to hear some trumpet? Yeah? yeah? Okay. The, your hopes are probably very high because this gentleman here plays 
guitar wonderfully, and I'm a comedian, okay? I, I don't play very well. I'm, this is weird. <laughs> okay, I'm just, just gonna get the instrument then. I used to play a song in Warsaw uh, at a comedy club, and after the show, a guy wanted me to play it. He wouldn't leave me alone. That was at three in the morning. Uh, three. Three in the morning, okay? And we know Polish police. Are there any Polish people in the crowd to give me a clap? All right, great. Polish people are here. So we know Polish police, they're not extremely friendly. You should be kind of careful with them. But I gave in because I told you I don't make very good choices in life. So I played this song at three in the morning in Warsaw. Outdoors. So I did that, and suddenly a window opens above my head, and I hear, Spierdalaj pan z tromko! Which, basically for you, all your non-Polish speaking people, means, fuck off with the trumpet, sir. Okay? That's weird for a person who grew up surrounded by English. You can't say that. Like, if you're in England, and you, somebody bumps into you, yeah? And you go, get the fuck out of my way, madam. <laughs> they will think you're mental. They'll think you have lost your mind, right? But in Poland, we like to distance ourselves from the person we are trying to get in a fight with, which is kind of weird. I think it still comes from the communist era. I'm not sure, but yeah. Like if you ever go to a bus and somebody says, Psiada pan kurwa czy nie? That means, are you fucking getting on the bus or not, sir? So, remember, sometimes if they say, call you sir or madam, they might be actually offending you, guys, okay? Um, I was gonna, oh yeah, um, one last thing, guys. Uh, I've been traveling around a little bit doing stand-up, and I went to Krakow. People been to Krakow? Nice city, right? Yeah, it's a lovely place. There's some competition between Krakow and Warsaw. Let's leave that behind. We can admit it's a nice place. I went there to perform, and I wanted to get a train with my girlfriend. Uh, and we went to the train station. The only train that was left was Pendolino. Amazing Pendolino train, which is the fastest train in Poland right now. And guess how much it costs? 150 zloty one way to Krakow. That's insane. I can fly to England. I can fly to England and back for 150 zloty sometimes. So that was a bit too much for me, but we did it anyway. And I was late. It took longer than the shit train. Okay? So basically, I discovered that we do have fast trains and they're really good, right? But the tracks are still very old. So it's like driving a limo and a pile of shit. You're just never gonna get there on time because we're not ready for it. So on the way back, to Warsaw, we went for the cheap option. The one where you have a, you know, your little room with weird people, <laughs> weird strangers, and somebody might smell weird, and maybe somebody's acting weird. It's all strange, but it's kind of nice in that way, right? So we got that, and there were two English lads next to me, a Polish girl, my girlfriend, me, and a, and a Polish 40-year-old head-shaven dude. I'm just saying how he looked like. Nothing to the, there's a lot of people with shaven heads who are totally cool. But he, <laughs> he was sitting there, okay? <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, so he was sitting there and he was talking on the phone to some woman, to a lady, okay? And he's talking to her, saying stuff like, yeah, yeah, I've been around, yeah, I've been, I just came back from Sweden. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, usually on the second, usually on the second date, I uh, get into bed, uh, I like to, Keep it pretty quick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, I, I have money. I don't really care about money, but I do have a lot of money. So if you need that, and he's talking like this for about, in Polish, and then he goes, "Oh, there's what? There's now there's like four angole in here, which in Polish is like a 
derogative term to English people. If you hear Angol, that means that it's a derogative term. So he, he says stuff like that for about 45 minutes, right? But at the end of the whole conversation, I hear him go, what? For just friends? Ah, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, we can be just friends. So basically, he wasted 45 minutes on a conversation with this lady because she saw through his bullshit. Okay? And I wish that on you guys to find somebody who accepts you for who you are and that you see through people's bullshit. And have a lovely life, okay? And have a lovely evening. I've been Andrei Sosnowski. Thank you very much, guys.